This conference will now be recorded. No, you're fine. All right. Whenever you want. All right. Call this meeting of the Lovington City Commission to order. Oh, I'm sorry. What is the way just happened? Yeah, I was waiting until he comes back. <laughs> Workshop, so I'm in work clothes. Mm -hmm. Other than that, Ms. Kennedy, you have the floor. Mayor, Commissioners, I'd like to thank you um, for coming. I'm going to try to move through this methodically, um, but stop me anytime if you have a question or if something's not clear. Um, and then I'll try to kind of lead Jaylene. She's going to be driving for me uh, through some of these documents that are on the screen here. Um, I just wanted to start out kind of with an explanation of what I've done thus far in the process. Um, it's not like a traditional budget would have been because a traditional budget I would have started a lot further into the process, uh, pretty much what 
plugging numbers in. Uh, we're just now getting into that part of the process, of plugging the numbers in. So we will be going over some numbers in the subsequent budget meeting. But for right now, it's going to be a, a overall uh, view of what our funds are, or our carpets, and the changes that I've proposed to make. And then hopefully everything will kind of come together and make sense for everybody and why there was a, a necessity to do it this way. Um, so I'm going to start with, we have a, we have a quarterly DFA report that has to be submitted. Um, and that's been challenging in that the DFA only has a, a certain amount of line items that you have to report your information onto. Uh, so what ends up happening is you have to consolidate many, many multiple lines to and, and accounts into certain line items to report it so that they don't want too much detail in their reporting. And therefore, um, you have to be able to tell what somebody previously had done to input these numbers. And that was pretty difficult for me, having been the first time I had done it. Not only that, but trying to decipher what accounts made up what line items in the LGBMS system, which is the DFA reporting system. Um, your only guide for that in, in, in well, it depends on how closely your accounts and affairs, but the only guide for those is the budget numbers. Um, I went into some detail at the last commission meeting about the, the difficulty in the budget numbers and not having the bars, the budget adjustment report. Um, we just had a brief meeting uh, right before this meeting. Our question was asked, and we'll get some clarification tomorrow if we have a meeting at one. Myself, manager, and the mayor have a meeting one with the DFA. Um, and so we're going to probably kind of ask that question to them, get some clarification on how those budget adjustment reports need to take place going forward and what they want us to do um, for, well, for this last three quarters of this year in the reporting. So um, in talking to Michael, the DFA. He's kind of the, the trainer person. Uh, he's also kind of, he, he jumps in whenever a community or a county or something has lost a finance director and he will complete those reports in that person's absence. And so he's had lots of experience over many years of doing these reports. Um, and he was kind of telling me at first when when I was kind of going back and forth with him getting assistance to this the second quarter DFA report, uh, he was telling me that he was kind of disappointed to see that Lovington had deviated away from the system that was in place at one point because we were the proxy for this LGBMS. Um, they mimicked a lot of our department's funds accounts in order to come up with their uh, template for their departments and funds. And you'll see as I go through this that some of them still exist in that, in that same format and some of them haven't. And so we kind of just got off track with a lot of different things and I'm trying to, to kind of bring it all back together get it back on track with the DFA. That will make it extremely easy in the reporting aspect of it, but I also want to point out that there's a reason it was done that way, and we need to get back to it because it's the tried and true method, and, you know, we just got, we got a long way from it. I think there's a lot of explanation for it, um, including conversion when we went from our, our other software, whatever that was, into the Tiger Encode. So you'll hear me say Tyler a lot tonight, it's not a person. Um, and when they did the conversion, there was a lot of accounts that weren't converted. And then I think they just did, 
they just took shortcuts and then it accounts and just duplicated over and over and over. Um, and that created a nightmare for us. And I'll get into some more specifics, but just the other day we had our municipal court uh, manager come in and tell us that they had been charged $7,500 for an electrician for the wastewater plant. And the three of us, we sat down and sure enough, it had been taken out of their their department and only because they found the description they were looking for, I guess. Um, so this will, will be simultaneously training the managers on this system, um, but a lot of that's going to go away because it's going to be so much easier to read this, it's going to be easier to decipher it, um, it's going to allow for the managers to have a better grasp on what's going on in their specific department and being able to watch out for sort of these sort of things uh, where it, actually I think the budget if you looked in there and saw that 7500 because I have told the managers until my face is turned blue in this process to not use historical numbers and we're going to see why that is tonight um, and so what I've told them all is as of July 1st, they will have, I'm going to like laminate this thing and it's going to be posted on their computer in their lap drawer somewhere. And I'll expect them to be looking at that every time they create a video. Um, every time they are doing anything in that title of their system, I want them to be referring back to their list of what accounts we budgeted for certain expenses. And I've, and I've told them, you do not deviate from this list. Even if you go over budget, uh, that's been a, it's a culture around here that they'll look at their budget. Some, some managers know how, some don't. But they'll look at their budget and they'll say, oh, I'm under budget here. I'll just take it out of this one. And so that's another reason why historical numbers are not accurate because you don't know what made up that number. Um, because they have a tendency to try to stay under budget by doing things like that. Um, when really in the end, all that matters is their department stays under budget. And then of course the city as a whole stays under budget. Uh, but next year, after we've implemented this system and had a year of it, and we can keep all the managers on that list, then we will be able to look at historical numbers next year. And we will be able to just do a simple budget where we've added X percentage for fuel, you know, rising fuel costs or just whatever that line item may be. Um, I do want this to be kind of a living, breathing document over the next year. I do want to be able to make changes to it. Um, and, you know, just kind of create it to be customized for each department. Um, I'm doing that right now because I've sent the list out that we're going to be going over to everybody and just ask them to look at the list, make sure that they agree with what I've omitted or if they're going to say, no, I want that account back. I use that account. Um, we can change the descriptions. We can do whatever we want with these. And so I want them to be easily recognizable. Uh, I want the managers to to play a big part in this and coming up with the numbers and then that way they can more easily manage their departments throughout the year instead of just actually not having any clue whatsoever where these numbers came from what they even mean um, it's been a little challenging for some managers others you know they welcome this opportunity to be provide the numbers instead of the other way around so um, so what I did was I went into the, the LGBMS website and I printed this off. This first document is a three page table and it's all scribbled in. This is the funds that they use when they have, when you report to LGBMS. They have this three page document list of funds. And then they have a three-page document, which is, well, it's actually two and like 
four lines on the third uh, list of departments. Um, a lot of the ones that I've kind of marked through in black here, they don't pertain to us in any way whatsoever because it's a county um, description or you know something that we don't have as a city, a certain function or department or whatever. Um, and so I started there and then I started, I, I had a big whiteboard in the manager's office and I've been able to take that and put it on to the document that says department fund type. You should have this attachment when she pulls it up. And there's two sheets here. Um, is that the one that says, okay, go to the dry erase board tab? Okay. So, what I've done is I've tried to make the, the dry erase board and I, I translated it here onto a, to a spreadsheet so that it can be printable so that everybody can see it and then also read it. It got pretty messy in there. Um, but I can't tell you how many hours I stood in front of that dry erase board just kind of staring at it. So, um, I'll start with explaining to you the difference between in, in the nomenclature. We've got funds, departments, and accounts. So it's a way to drill down three levels. Our first three numbers of any of our account numbers are the they represent the fund, and that's three numbers. The second set of numbers is four numbers, and it represents the department. And then the last set of numbers is five numbers and it represents the account or the expense code or the revenue code. Um, within each fund, there are five types of accounts. You have asset accounts, which is what you own, liability accounts, which is what you owe. You have a, um, try to make sure I get the right terminology, <laughs> different words for it. Um, Equity. You have your equity account, um, which is some will refer to as network, and it's what you own minus what you own. And then, so those are what you would call a balance sheet item. And then you have your income statement or your profit and loss statement, and those are your expenses and your revenues. Um, and so all that a budget is going to be doing is dealing with the revenues and expenses. So what you're going to be seeing here is nothing but revenues and expenses, but this document right here, I did print it, the chart of accounts report. And every report or every account that we have in our system, active, inactive, it's all revenue accounts, asset accounts, liabilities, equity, all the different accounts. Um, and it's 71 pages. Um, accounts. So I haven't got an account of those yet, but I started out just cutting in half anyways because the only half that I'm worried about at this juncture is the uh, revenue expense accounts. So there is, you know, more work to be done in the month of June to get the uh, asset liability and equity accounts to tie into the the revenue and expense accounts like they should properly, but that's not being done right now anyways. So there's not too much damage that I'm doing here with changing all this stuff up um, because it all needs maintenance. It all needs to be done. Um, I reached out to Tyler in code for just some simple answers to some questions. And of course, they don't want to be helpful because we pay them to be helpful, but they want us to pay them more to do this for us. And I told them, thank you, but no thank you. You've done enough. I'm perfectly willing, able, capable to do this. I just needed a little bit of guidance. And so um, I'm probably going to have to have them kind of bolster my admin rights to be able to do this, um, this work in our, our in-code system. But right now I'm working off the spreadsheets. Um, I'll take off the spreadsheets and put into the LGBMS system 
that deadline is June 1st, but I have it input into LGBMS. And then I will have all of June to do the maintenance within our software. And that's where Melissa and Tracy are going to come in because they're going to have to help me with that. So it's going to be a big, big job. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be, we can delete accounts that have never been used before. There are some uh, in there. I've just kind of been playing with it and found a couple that I could delete. If there's ever been any activity, not even just a single transaction within an account, that account can't be deleted, but it can be inactivated. And I will be changing the admin rights so that just myself and these two ladies over here will have access to be able to activate accounts, reactivate accounts, so that we don't have accounts kind of sneaking in under the radar that are being used and it'll end up just dirtying this all back up again. So I'm gonna make I'm gonna have a tight handle on who's gonna be able to activate accounts or, or make changes to descriptions, things like that. Um, Can so, I have a question? I'm yes. Sorry. We've got a lot of whatever, and I want to do a couple of clarifications if we can. Mm -hmm. All right. We have three. We have funds, mm -hmm. we have departments, and we have accounts. Okay. Is it possible to look at a fund as a, a receivable account? In other words, Money can go into funds. Mm -hmm. From those funds, money can then go to departments. Okay. But then, can we say that effectively the accounts are ex is an expenditure account from that department? I mean, is that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so, in talking with Michael extensively about this, about what the mentality is between funds and departments, um, this, this builds efficiency. So not only will we have efficiency within our GFA reporting, we have um, you know, operational efficiencies, but big time efficiencies on the, on the girls here where we're reducing journal entries, which are a manual process. Everything else can be automated, but the journal entries cannot. And so that, you know, additional work. And so we want to avoid that in any, in any case we can. And so it was with that goal in mind that I did all of this. Um, so anything that is on the left-hand side of your screen here, anything that's a fund is in one way or another generating revenue. Um, it's not my, it's not maybe necessarily completely standalone that they don't have to get some funding from general fund, but for the most part, they the concept is it shouldn't be on the fund on the left hand side of the screen here unless it's it's basically self-sustaining. Um, everything on the right hand side is a department in that it's an expense. So everything you see on the right hand side is all going to be falling under the 110. So general fund, we're changing, it was 101. Um, we're changing it to 110 because that is the number that the DFA uses. And so 110 is the first three digits. The second four digits is the department. So whether it is another fund on its own. So for example, fire grant 209. Um, even though it's a fund, the department will still be fire on the right hand side. Um, so it'll still be 3002 is the new fire department. I had one question on um, fund for motor vehicles since we charge a $6 fee for each transaction. <laughs> Would that be considered funds or part of the category? We, um, motor vehicles was one that I kind of, I had taken it, it had been on the fund side before, as it was. Uh, I moved it over to department and then I moved it back. You know, I was just kind of going back and forth uh, because we do get some other revenues other than that city fee. Um, generated from 
the motor vehicle, but I haven't made a final determination on that one. Oh, the, the rest of them were all pretty cut and dry. I haven't made a final determination on that one until I get her numbers. When I get the numbers, I'll be able to tell if it's really going to make itself a fund or if it's going to be a department. So, um, so yeah, this this is still not set in stone either, uh, but it's pretty close in in the final, um, you know version that I want to see. And so, like I said, everything um, everything on the right hand side column falls somewhere into one of the numbers on the left hand side of the column, most of which are going to be in the general fund, the 110, because that's the fund where my whereby money moves very fluidly in and out of those departments without having to do a journal entry. So anytime I go from general fund, which is where everything comes in and everything goes out of it, that's the, the final destination and it's the first destination for everything. If I'm going from general fund to one of the other funds, then it's a journal entry. And so uh, the goal here was to try to reduce those as much as possible. Um, if you scroll to the bottom, Jillian, so I, I hit on this just briefly the other night at the commission meeting, but we have we have reduced the fund count by 18, and that's a net number because I would have to funds and subtract. This is a net loss of 18 funds and a net loss of 17 departments. And right now the count the account is right at 1,500 accounts that I have determined need to go away. They're either redundant, and we'll look at that, but they're redundant or um, they're not tailored to the specific department or to the specific fund. Example, the library had a boot fund, and there was a lot of money that came out of the library boot fund, um, and it was there, so somebody used it. And that's what I'm going to stop from happening um, you know, Debbie doesn't know anything about it because it got done, you know, I don't um, and these ladies over here, they're plenty busy just input stuff. They, they can't catch this stuff all the time, but they'll have this list, you know, their automated list as well, so that they'll be able to, to refer to that. Um, or Tracy's got sticky notes and stuff for, for the payment that comes out once a year, and she has to go look at her sticky note to see what account that needs to come out of. And um, it's just all these different things that we can remedy by just doing the work here to get all this cleaned up. Um, so I think I've kind of explained the funds and the departments pretty well. If anybody has any questions, I can kind of stop there. Um, I, there might be something that pops up in my mind later on, but for now, I think I'm through that portion. Um, and so, when you are reaching out to your department mm -hmm. manager, are they primarily looking at expenditures? Yes. Obviously, I mean, they can take historical revenue, possibly, but you have you focused them on expenditures? Um, they have, at the, at the moment, they have full, they have full realm of telling me what they think those revenues are. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to have to go back with them and verify that. Uh, because revenue is actually something that we can maybe hit a little closer to using this. We know the expenses are a mess. Uh, but revenues, for the most part, they're not going to be as complicated or as messy. Um, we don't have a lot of, of revenues. Um, if you'll open up general fund, it's the 110, and so it should be like the top. 
I think I think to take note of is that all the apartment bids are all new, so yeah, it's how the you mold them is how they're going to sure. work in their favor. And so this is the best opportunity for you to give the city manager to mold these new department heads mm -hmm. on how the direction you want to hit. Yeah. Okay, so what you're looking at here is general fund. Um, this is a I don't know, the document itself is probably 2,000 lines long. Um, but as I said before, I took the the asset and liability accounts off or just working with the revenue and expenses. So what we have on the left-hand side is the existing numbers, existing account numbers as they are. The old description column, the second column in the middle, is the existing description when you pull up that account. That's what you see on your screen. Um, the third column is what I propose to rename it. The fourth column is the budget column. So that's the column that I, that I sent out. This is actually, I sent every manager this, this and all of the other funds. Um, I wanted them to see the non-redacted version with the red. Reds are the ones going away. I wanted them to see that because they might say, no, I want that account. I don't want you to get rid of it. To get rid of it. Um, or can we name it something else or whatever? Because I, I absolutely am not going to create even more new accounts with this process. There's plenty of basically skeleton accounts that we can rename and renumber and just start using them without just creating more. Um, and so the final column on the right hand side is the notes column. Um, I use that for myself. I've asked the managers to use that for their own. Um, I want that column to stay intact when when I do print this final and everybody gets their laminated copy, I want that column to be intact because I want them to be able to look at their notes and go, oh, I remember what we put in that line. Um, and then next year when we're doing budget, oh, we know what's in that line. Um, and so the final laminated version will be four columns. It'll have the new account numbers. It'll have the new description. It'll have the budget number and it will have the notes. So it'll be four columns. This old description column is going to go away. And then, of course, the numbers are going to change. Um, and so this first section that you're looking at here, um, it's only a couple of pages long, is the revenues that come into general fund. As I said before, everything comes into general fund. So you have to capture it in some form or fashion within general fund, even if it ends up going somewhere else to another fund. So our big one is GRT general. It's that 31250. That's our big one. That's our big revenue. So everything will come into that. Then I will be able to do my general ledgers to split those funds out pertaining to a discussion we had many meetings ago about the ordinances and how those GRT funds are supposed to be split. Um, and so that's a big one. Um, and then if you'll just scroll down, Jimmy, you'll get to the bottom of the number of accounts. There's not a lot of them. We have a lot more expenses than revenues. So you can see here all the red. I've, I've made an explanation for all the ones that are in red, I've made an explanation for why I moved it. So I have, or why I got rid of it. So I have duplicate written there. Um, I have 110 general fund, meaning that it came, like the ones in the red there, the 255s, they came from a different fund, but they were duplicated and they need to be in general fund. And so what I did was, uh, put them on this, this screen, even though they're not 101s, um, and just noted that they're going to stay in general fund. Um, the one thing that you'll see repeated on each expense um, 
well, each revenue and expense fund, when we go into the different fund, is the adjust the entry, the operating transfers in, operating transfers out. And then sweep is dealing with our main operating account. We have one operating account at the county state bank that manages all of this. And this that money gets sweeped because of the way that they do the, the overnight funds and stuff like that, banking stuff. Um, so that's what those uh, things are. And so throw we only up. have four. Throw, throw, throw back up, please. Pass that. Keep going, keep going. Pass all the red. Okay. So your your income and your expense are both 101s? Yes, because the the first three numbers indicates the fund, not the account type. So actually your your account types are more readily described in the last five numbers. But in some form and fashion, there's they're all zeros if they're a revenue account. Yeah. So, and we have a little bit of rhyme or reason to it, but the problem is it's not consistently that way that I found. Um, so example, there's an interest income number right there, 0001. If we're maintaining the 0000 for revenue accounts, then we just deviated from that with that interest income number. And so that's just another cleanup item. When we're renumbering these, we'll have to be really careful about Remember correctly. Um, okay, so keep going down. Let's go to this department. Scroll in here. So we've got a small set, there's like four expenses that we're calling general fund expenses. And then we go into each department. And so what you're looking at there is legislative. So that would be um, Shannon's department. And um, so what you'll see there, and this is where you'll start to understand where the messy came in. Uh, right there at the very top, we've got parageneral and parageneral. We have parageneral legislative and parageneral executive. Now, somebody's not paying close attention to the fact that they're both 1010 on the second number, which indicates the department. Uh, 1010 is the department code for, for legislative. But if you're just reading things, then you might grab the wrong account. And so we already have a problem there with descriptions not matching account numbers. So we have an inconsistency that we have to fix. Uh, that's created a lot of problems. I can't tell you how much. These girls could tell you probably more um, how big of a problem that causes. And, you know, because Tyler does let you just search for a description. You can type in para and it'll pull up every para account that we have. And you can just any, mini, miny, mo it if you want, and that's a problem. And so now we're gonna we're gonna try to stop that from happening. And so I just called that a duplicate. I marked it red and said that one's going away. Um, let me take this opportunity to explain further why that's a really bad problem. Um, this is our detailed budget report, and it's as of 3.31, but uh, I'll, have a, I'll have the manager or I'll have the department manager come in and say, where are we at in our budget? And it's always a loaded question. So, for example, wastewater was one. Um, Brad came in one day, where am I at on my budget? And I said, okay, at first glance, you were budgeted to lose 1.1 in expenses, and you're actually at 1.2 right now. And by the end of the year, if you keep in my exact trajectory, you'll be at 1.6. So that's a negative 523,000 that that one department went over budget. Well, I can't blame it all on Brad because the first set up to this line, you see that? Mm -hmm. All of those are different departments. 
They all start with 505. So they're in the fund, the wastewater fund. But they're not in the department. I've got 1210, which is finance, a lot of finance. I've got 2100, which is public works. Got 2125, which is water department, and then the rest of them are the 505, 2130, going all the way down to the bottom. So, really, up until that point, he shouldn't have been expensed any of those. Well, maybe, maybe not. They might have been his, just taken out of the wrong account within the same fund, but they also might have been, it might have been salary and wages for finance of $41,000. Um, I, you know, I know that some of this stuff was split for a reason when it had to do with finance. Uh, there was an attempt always made to split admin costs and all kinds of stuff throughout all these departments. I didn't see any reason to be doing that. I am an expense department. I might as well be my own department and I'll just be a you know black hole. I'm an expense department. Um, and so by splitting my salary, for example, across many different departments, it's just diluted the debt. And not only that, but it's a pain in the butt. And they have to do things with it. They, you know, there's no reason to do all that. Um, I created two new departments with that in mind. I created an IT department and an HR department where we can take some of these expenses that appear over and over and over again in each department and we can consolidate it into one so that again we can see how much for example uh copier contracts cost us because we every department has their own copier contract that's inefficient because audi makes lots of money on us because he has a contract on that copier for five hundred dollars and a contract on that one for twenty five hundred and so on and so forth. If we can get all of the, we can just say, hey, Audi, how much will you charge us to do all the copy machines in Lexington on one contract? We'll just expense it out of the IT. Um, it's a way that we can manage these costs better because other, I mean, the, in its current version, this doesn't do us any good. The budget is not a tool for us. It is just something that we just throw something at the wall. It's just something that we send over to LG or to DFA just to satisfy a deadline. That's all that we've been using the budget for. If we can get it straight, if we can get this fixed, we can actually use it as a tool. We can see where we're bleeding money. We can see where we need to cut expenses instead of just going straight for the easy, you know, the low hanging fruit is payroll, right? But we'll be able to find a lot of money within this budget that we don't have to spend. So that's probably, if I was going to say the number one reason for doing this, it's not even efficiency. It's not a ease of reporting. It's none of those things. It's to make a budget into the tool that it's meant to be. So can you have a letter in your account number or is it actually numerical? Yeah, it's all there's no letters. Um, so that's kind of my little box there. Um, did I just want to just uh, uh, I just want to, I don't want to get something from you, but I'll look it on the funds and again, I'm just trying to assess what we have yeah, listed as funds it, on the injection well. Mm -hmm. Did you actually ever get a cap on that? On, on and so forth because that's like a hundred thousand a year yes um i don't have that go ahead and close out of that chair or just minimize it we'll be going back to the general fund a lot i just don't see what purpose it would i remember what time we said we put it inside mm -hmm. but scotty and i were talking about the time where we said we couldn't put that money inside not use it to use it but then it got into the general fund and yeah I know where it's at, you know? yeah and, and that's that's so another thing you know um, when I was making the termination, I was sitting with the department heads trying to, to justify whether they needed a fund or not. Um, that was what I continually said. If you, if you want your revenues to stay within your department, we need to create you a fund for it. Because if it goes into general fund, it's fair game for anybody. 
Um, and so an example of that is, and there's some that just absolutely have to be there, like LEPF. That money can't be touched by anybody else in general fund, or we lose it, the state takes it away from us. Um, senior citizens is another one that's very strictly monitored. Um, motor vehicles is there's a trust fund, and that has to be done that way because the the state will just come based on the motor vehicle reports. They just come take their money for registration, and we don't want them just taking their money from somewhere that's not dedicated because we collected money for that purpose. It needs to be set aside in that fund so that it can be taken from that fund and not mingled in with the rest of it. Um, and so, you know, when I uh, was trying to justify certain funds, that was that was the big test. Is you know, I I gave animal shelter. I have an animal special revenue fund because they're expecting a pretty sizable uh, contribution, and so I wanted to make sure that that got captured and it got utilized for animal and not just put into general fund and then used somewhere else. And so that's been a major issue ever since I've been here, is trying to locate monies, especially for projects, trying to locate monies for projects. And so I created a, I think it's 399. Yeah, 399. I have a capital projects fund. Within that fund, I can, that's probably going to be the only fund that I'll ever create accounts with. And if we have a new project, I'll create an account. And that way we will know, we will have the accounting for those expenses and those revenues, and they'll be set aside and not make stand with the rest of it. So that, but. Mr. Mayor, yes. I have a question. Okay. Uh, Ms. Kennedy, I see the numbers and I see what you did, which is great. You have old funds old departments, new funds, new departments. So you had you got all these numbers and you cleaned it up. That's basically what you did. You cleaned everything up. Here's our count. Yes. Okay. All right. Which is great. I want to see, I want to try to make it a little more simple. Let's use the city clerk, for example. Mm -hmm. So next fiscal year, starting July 1st, she will have a budget. Yes. And all her account numbers. Mm -hmm. Here it is. From her salary, everyone in her department will have her operational fund, how much she office supply and mm -hmm. age uh, for to hire people, advertisement. We'll have the the exact budget for yes. her. So we will be able to pull that up Go to the other and they'll have the exact amount uh -huh. of her fiscal year, of her budget. Yes. So in within every one of these funds, I have a tab at the top that says with deletions and without deletions. That's the clean copy right there. That's without all the red. Um, when when it's cleaned up for like so when they'll have their uh, thing, they'll have the new number, the one description, not two, the budget amount, and the other. So my master worksheet that I'm working off of now, as these um, budget numbers are coming in, I'm putting them onto this clean sheet, and I have it told at the bottom. So I mean, it's a spreadsheet, so I've just built in formulas. So yes, we will have a total at the bottom of expenses that will, it, it's just we're not there yet with any numbers. And so when the numbers all start coming in, then yes, we can look at each individual department and we can say, this department's going to cost this much to run for the year. This department's going to cost this much. And they'll have everything in it. Like, yes. for example, then, yeah. today I did ask for code enforcement, uh -huh. but it was just some highlighted yeah. numbers little that section. really didn't say anything. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's so a little section within the general fund. I have these all sectioned out by department. So with commission, if we need to pull public works the water department, Ron Woods, mm -hmm. he should have everything in yeah. the street to, uh, in water department, salaries, everything, yeah. the total amount. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So any one of these, so you'll see the cleaned up version. Uh, we're on legislative right now, so there's Shannon right there. The 
top line is going to be her payroll. Then over time, FICA and Medicare, retirement, para, health insurance, workers' comp, student, safety bonus. Every one of those from there up has to do with employees. And so therefore, it's easy to make a statement that payroll and those accounts make up half of our budget. Um, the other half is probably both in line items and in amounts, I would say. Um, and then the rest of them is other costs. And so moving on down, um, safety bonus, we've got travel. Uh, that would be for any kind of trainings, fuel, uh, legislative. No, do y'all have a fuel? Do you need a fuel account? Oh, so I can't remember who I put three. I think I put three under. So I need to look that one. Um, Maintenance contract for their maintenance, county fees, supplies, FFE, training, purchase fees, postage. But so going on down. So she has an election expense that nobody else has. Um, and so that's why I say it's, it's going to allow us to be a little bit more tailored. Okay, so her, she submitted a request for the budget for next this week. Mm -hmm. And so here, let's just say what's her total amount for next fiscal year ballpark right now? What would be her total? Um, I don't remember. I put it in. I put it sh in. It should be, it. let's just say, four hundred fifty thousand. The one I remember, um, because it's a big, big number, is the animal uh, department. I now have their numbers. I plugged it in. I've asked two questions because I found okay. utilities to be extremely high, and then I found that. Um, she has what I felt like was a duplication between professional fees and vet fees. Um, okay. And her budget is almost 700,000. So I think something's terribly wrong with that one. Okay, uh, but my point, going back to the clerk, let's just say, for example, it's 450,000. She had 450,000 here. This department, you mentioned 700,000. So you have all the departments and their and the requests. Yeah. And then you're gonna have a total. Yeah. But then we look at this, yeah. and if we're only bringing in annually sixteen million dollars, yes. That if so, where we, we need to look at yeah what it's gonna cost for each to operate every single department the total amount, mm -hmm. which I assume is gonna be more than. The 15 that we're bringing in annually. Yes, and then we will have to look into each department and decide, you know, for example, you know, cemetery. Uh, he put the backup into the cemetery request. Um, there's a an account for um, vehicles and something. Go down a little bit. Okay, keep going. So based on your um, so yeah, he. And this equipment, machine, or vehicles, um, he did put that in the numbers for this is an expense over the next year, 130000 But that's, you know, going to be a place where we say, well, you know, how much do we need that backbone? Does that number need to come out of the budget? Right, because correct me if I'm wrong, right now, our total revenues for this about $15 million. Mm -hmm. What are your projections based on the meeting with the department's total amount that they're requesting? And that, is how, how big is that number compared to the 15? Is it a significant number or we don't know? We don't know yet. We, we are compiling those numbers. Um, they're plugging, I'm plugging them into the master, which like I said, has all the formulas built in. And it will, as I'm plugging them in, as the departments are, are sending in their numbers, um, there's going to be a lot of numbers I've got plugged in as well that they either left blank or, you know, or something I need to go back with them and say, you know, for example, Laura, you know, she put 31,000 in utilities. <laughs> and um, so I think that's why so I need to get with her on that. Um, there's still going to be some, some, Way less uh, formal meetings with all the department managers as these numbers are coming in. Um, 
I've already had many, many, many department managers just pop in, needing some help with stuff, explanation with stuff. And so that's what we're working on right now. But until we are able to fill in that budget column, we won't have our final budget um, that will be A, voting on, and B, um, inputting into LGBMS. And then eventually into the so, so basically, we have absolutely no numbers tonight. No, we don't have. Okay. We, we have. Mr. Mayor, uh, I move to adjourn because without numbers, we're just going through her process, and we don't really need to know that. I mean, you can if you want to spend, but for myself, I want numbers. I was expecting numbers tonight, and I mean, I I, I appreciate all the hard work and the cleanup and everything like that, but we've got to make a decision, and we need numbers. So until they have some hard numbers, I would, would move for an adjournment. That is what I was going to have to have done by the next budget workshop. That's why we decided to have two rather than one. Yeah, but and typically we were, just we were going to have one budget workshop, and we were going to push it to the week before the commission meeting. Because at the commission meeting, I don't intend on presenting numbers. I intend on having the numbers at the budget workshop. That at the commission meeting, you'll just be basically so, voting so on the numbers. I understood this to be a budget workshop and typically I need numbers for a budget workshop. So what is this meeting then? It was not my decision to have two separate workshops. Okay. Well that's fine. I so I think I, I'm good. Overall I understand the commissioner and concern, but I think we still need to know the process and the structure, the new structure because if not will be lost, let's say Commissioner Bowen wants to pull something up, just like Dr. Martinez had stated on one department. If he don't know the structure, how is he going to log in? That's why I think sometimes, I, and I agree with Scotty, you know, that's we're typically uh, used to numbers and put dog in these. But I, I don't want to like to sit here and know the structure, so I could at least have my input in case I feel that the structure's not sound in my in my. Let's make adjustments to the structure, the, the new structure put in place, just like Dr. Martinez was making that suggestion. They simplify. Uh, I, I, I want to uh, simplify as much as possible because I like to pull something up or, or something like that. Compared to what we used to have, like I said, we have hundreds of that, that we didn't even need. So, yeah, I mean, I can bring to the commission and have it approved based off that spreadsheet I gave you last week, the one page table where you're making a decision on numbers that you have no idea what makes up those numbers mm -hmm. and that obviously wasn't accurate we were off by 10 million dollars so i'm trying to go into great detail here to explain this so not only did i spend time doing this i spent time getting it into a format whereby i could explain it to everybody so that you're expected to make a decision on these numbers and you'll actually know what they're made up can you, on your descriptions, to dumb it down further for us, because you can't have a letter in your account number, can you put like R dash E dash revenue expense on the title? So just when we first look at it, we know, because like, say you have like Shannon's department and you have para one and para two, well, you could have R para and E para, so we know when is coming in and when is going out. Just So if you just quickly look, you know, like you don't have to go, to the end of the line item and do, you know and see if it's coming in or out you, you just know that right because that that revenue account could be a positive number and that expense account could be a positive number until they clash you know what i'm saying yeah. so we wouldn't be able to tell until it's all done coming out so, yeah and so that's because we're not as yes and that's a good observation because as you're doing input into lgbms you're not putting in positive or negative numbers you only put in positive number and that's how we work and that positive becomes a problem when you're not balancing because you inadvertently put an expense item into a exactly. revenue account so they know they're not going to throw it in the wrong right if it's a new guy or whatever right well that, that's yeah. what i encountered the yeah. first time i did the dfa report um and when i wasn't balancing it was that mm -hmm. for the most part i was able to remove them from vice versa and make it work because um, right. it's not as simple as just there's a big red negative number and you right. count that as an expense. Right. Cool. Okay. All right. Commissioner Gaines. 
I understand your request. Okay. So, so let me change my request. Can I be excused? Absolutely. That was where I was fixing the. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm checking, but because I understand the process, and I, I don't discourage your work and everything like that. But I'm not here to recreate the wheel. I was here for numbers. I want to know what the income was, what the, their their expenses were going to be, and how far off we were going to be from there. So I understand there's been a lot of work on that. That's that's part of their job. I understand that. But um, as far as the rest of it, I'll just excuse myself and y'all enjoy. All right. Thank you, man. Going back to Dr. Martinez's question earlier, so what barriers are going to put in place? Let's say, for instance, you make an example of uh, the animal control having to put in a big number for their budget. How can you? How are you going to be able to control her from not spending too much when your income versus expenses start to come in? You know, how, what barriers do you have in place, or? Yeah. Is there a PPO, like you said earlier, or how is that going to work? Because Those will be more uh, difficult for the expense departments because there's not offsetting revenue. So in the other funds, say, for example, uh, water, um, you know, for the most part, more like a private business, you're looking at your revenues dictating what your expenses are. And um, it's not as easy to do on just the the expense department. Mm -hmm. um, so there will just have to be some discernment yeah. to be taken into account uh, what priorities need or, to be or, made. You know, like saying, okay, you got $100 each quarter and you're only going to be allowed to spend X amount per quarter and that's it. You know, or something to break it down to four quarters or something yeah. to simplify it for their purposes. You want to bring each quarter. Quarter. <laughs> yeah, I'm just scared that they're all new. It goes back to them all being new. Yeah. New uh, director of their department yeah. and assuming that, hey, I got a million dollars on it. And about the end of months in, they were spent their, their money because they, they're, they're new at the process, knowing that that million dollars is not the bank. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's projections, income projections that we're projecting for 2022 mm -hmm. and 2023. Yeah. Of course. So, and in the, next, in the next meeting, um, they when we do have this format, but with a number at the bottom, and you're actually going to be approving the um, numbers, mm -hmm. then that will be that opportunity to say, you know, and, and yes, I've reduced it by almost 40 funds and departments. So we can probably pretty quickly run through each department and say, you know, do we feel like, for example, the only one I have, the animal department, do we feel that that justifies that big, big of an expense from that what? one department? Mr. Mayor, Commission. So, for example, going back to the city clerk, what once I have the proposal, then I'm going to have to go through every budget, every single budget. And for example, I'll go through there and say, okay, you want a backhoe, right? And you backhoe. Wait a second. Um, if you if we have one in public works, then maybe you can use that. So I'm going to have to actually go line item by line item and question. Okay, do we really need this right now? Can we get it through capital outlay? Can we wait six months? That will, I will have to go through every single budget and break it down. Then from there, if we're not close to this number, then every department's going to have to cut at least 10% or more in budget. Thank you. Mayor, and uh, also it's it's important to have a culture change is what it is because nobody has ever, I mean, stepping back in you, what I noticed from that, Stepped in as intern, there was no team. It was everybody, this is my department, this is my money, this is my equipment. And I said, well, can't you bring it over there to the to the to the uh, cemetery? No, but I need my backup. And then the backup was just sitting in the garage, you know, but nobody wants to be in it. And I think we need to bring that team concert set back that we're working as one team, one unit, and that's how we're moving forward, and, and not just individual departments with their own uh, equipment and say, no, I can't let it know. So we're too small of a community and as a, a you know entity to do that type. Of, you know we're not love it. We're not pops. You know we, we don't have the, the, the resources. And that's why we have a city manager to work to make sure all the guys fit together. Exactly. Right. So everybody's working together. Yeah. Yeah. And to further elaborate on that, um, 
something that I've noticed about that tribal mentality that, you know, good departments that, that do a good job watching their numbers and do a good job with their revenues and do a good job with budgeting, uh, they get punished because their money gets pulled elsewhere by a department that's not performing at that level. And the bad departments don't, they don't get punished, they get rewarded for the bad behavior. They are not being held accountable for this. And that's another thing that's going to be remedied by taking these budgets and stop intermingling them so badly. Um, and then, you know, sneaking things out under their noses. The, the managers will be responsible for watching these numbers. And whether it was done by mistake or on purpose, there won't be any of that money leaving their department without their knowing. It's just like bad schools. Mm -hmm. Bad schools will give all kinds of funding. There's the money yeah. to make it better. Because they're always in the red. They're always yeah. so always we have right. Yeah. Money schools they take away from yeah. it. Doesn't mean to have a good department, they need to be rewarded. And there's need to be changed out. And I want just before you go, I'm sorry. I want to kind of stress here that uh, while I appreciate Commissioner Yandy's thoughts on it, uh, we as commission are totally responsible for adopting the uh, budget. And it is my uh, feeling and opinion that we should understand the budget as, to the best of our ability in order to be able to make sound decisions and assist the city manager in possible uh, Areas to uh, either. In order to make the balance, the budget balance, we're going to have to be able to take uh, revenue that we expect, and of course we have no control over expectations of revenue. We get what we get, you know, whatever we can adjust it a little bit uh, at times, but we the expenditures are totally in our control. So we have to make sure that the department heads have a thorough understanding of how their department needs to run and what they're going to be required. And then the Commissioner Steele said, not spend their whole budget in the first couple of years. And again, this is a whole new uh, group of department heads, uh, commissioners, city manager, financial director, and um, I appreciate everyone that wants to understand this so that we can, as Commissioner Bolt said, work as a team and try to bring all of this back in. And I'm not one to dump it on these two, uh, the financial director and the city manager, and say, it's your bank. Because if we do, we're going to have to accept, based on the time restraints that we have, we're going to have to accept what they give. And I felt like this was a process tonight to help us understand how to do it. So that when we have those, uh, those numbers in front of us in two weeks, we can discuss those numbers intelligently and say, okay, how did, how did the wastewater department, I'm using them just as a, an example, not for any reason, how did they arrive that they need to spend for just operation, whatever that number is, one, two million, whatever it is? Uh, how did we arrive that the animal control part, uh, um, animal, what do we call it? What department is that? Animal, we're calling it. Okay, animal. animal. All right. We're trying to truncate everything. So what does that, you know, how did they arrive at 700 and something thousand dollars? Is it? reasonable is it reasonable in regards to the whole one of the things that uh, i know you're working on but i don't think we only have a good feel for revenue truthfully at this point I mean, we know a big number but we don't know right. how it's being divvied and how are you relaying to these department heads last year you spent what again wastewater if you're if you're requesting 1.5 million dollars and you spent 1.4 last year, how were you able to relay to them that they actually spent 1.4? What all would it encompass? And you know, for 1.5, is that just uh, 
right the cost of uh, new I mean new parts or whatever I mean how are we ramping that up and we are two weeks away here's my big question and I know that's a big how are we going to get there in two weeks that's where I am really uh, concerned um I mean, I've staggered. I asked the department managers to turn in the numbers Friday. I had three, I think, turn them in. Um, I didn't ask all of them. I gave the, the larger departments just a little bit more time. Uh, but since we had our department meetings, um, we went over this in those department meetings. And I asked them to continue working on these budget numbers to continue because they knew what their items were going to be. Uh, it wasn't until I got this report out where I was asking for the numbers to come back to me. Um, and that got severely delayed um, in all my other deadlines, trying to get this out to everybody uh, for what they needed to be getting numbers for. So, I mean, I obviously recognize that, um, you know, Another reason for my stress, but you know, I, I want to point out that there's only two people here that were in my interview, but I want to point out that this was my solution to fixing things: tear it down, build it back from scratch. It has to be done, it has to be, yeah. and we won't have good numbers till next year. And we're going to have to do our best to come up with good numbers. But if we use historical numbers, we know that's not going to get us anywhere close. To being right next year. This will get us closer and next year we can do a regular budget and we will have good data and we you know we'll be able to to capture all of this stuff. I, I realize that it's a work in progress. I realize it's going to take the next year to get it right uh, but we are going to have to do things by the book. We're going to have to do our budget adjustment reports. We're going to have to do all of these sort of things and make on the fly adjustments to this budget. That's something else that we haven't been doing. We have not been, we've been reacting, not being proactive on this. And that's because it's not a good tool. So that's my intention is to turn it into something that's going to be helpful. And, you know, I, I have a really hard time with reporting things that I can't fully back it up and I wasn't going to be I wasn't going to feel the same about our budget that was off by 10 million dollars so I wasn't going to just build in numbers and I mean would have been even further off if I had just said oh you know fields gone up by this much percent and this much inflation and you know throw in a number across the board and just increase our expenses by another couple million dollars no big deal you know um but that obviously wasn't my intention when I first got into this. It's just that I found issues that needed to be remedied before we could go forward. And yes, it has delayed me. Um, but you know, all of this having to account for my time is, you know, it just comes with the territory. It's going to take a while. And and if we have to have something to turn in, obviously we do. By June first, then we will have something to turn in. Um, but you know, I don't think budget. It's... I mean, that's one thing. Turn in a budget, budget too high, make budget adjustments. It's, it's clear, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but I just like to see what you are. No, you are meeting my expectations because I expect this to happen. I just needed the right person like yourself to come in and change it because if we're going to go down the same path, that's what led us. What what happened? So we're not going to we're not going to change. We're going to end up being the same place. You're meeting my expectations, and I know it takes time. And I am patient because I've seen them, folks. I remember the first week, not the first week. I was my internet. I said, "Oh shit, I'm going to have to tell the public we're broke." And my internet shaky. And by by Monday, by Friday, I was trying to capture what we need to do to keep us afloat. That's how bad we were. And then. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of emotions I kept for myself, but you are meeting my expectations, and I just hope that we get it right. She did a great job with tonight, but I, yeah, and it's still we just need patience, but I know, but we're moving forward, and I like the Dr. Martinez's idea and your ideas and tracing the staff list that everybody's part. 
I, I just like it. I mean, I'm, I'm totally satisfied with what's going on. And if we exceed, if we put in big numbers with our budget and they accept it, we can always make adjustments to it. But I'd rather make go down than go up, you know? So, that, you know, if you want me to put a high number, well, we'll make adjustments yeah. and we'll go down. I'd rather go down. I really have enough than not put that in the budget. So, so yes. good. I'm assuming you're, I'm sorry, I'm, just, I'm assuming you're talking expenditures because yes. because the problem is yeah. expenditures. Right. And I agree with that. We we don't want to exceed our expenditure budget that we turn in. Okay. That, that's just a key item. Okay. Our problem is uh, we need to get a good, a good grasp what we feel our revenue budget is and then we're going to have to adjust our expenditure budget to be that level or below yeah. and and work i mean we may want to put it approximately even but recognizing that as as we proceed through the year these department heads are going to have to have their 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 projected expenditure budget, their current today, and they're annualized so they can see approximately where they're going to end up the year. Now, worst case scenario is we have a drop of revenue. Then we're going to have to go in and do a, a either a one-time or whatever it is adjustment to the expenditure budget so that we don't end up uh, one of the key things is, and I, and I hope we stress this, is we can't go, we cannot spend more money than we bring in every year and be able to do this more than another year. And the way I looked at it is simple. We're able to operate this past year with the next amount of funds, being that we're like 400,000, like we can right now. But you see them revenues, they don't match what we used to get. They're way below. So I I feel strongly that let's make sure that we don't operate, we're not turning in the budget more than what we we've seen in the past year. Because let's say we have more bad. Let's say the if everything tanks again, or let's say we have another COVID run and we get less than half of our GRPs coming in or something. I that I mean I think that's why I think that's it. Let's look at that one history I want to get on is is revenues and we got three years with COVID and, and downturn of the oil and gas and everything else that happened. So we have some sort of trade, but I, I certainly don't want to go higher than that because it's tough. Can I understand where Commissioner Gandhi is coming from? Because I got down here, where are your projections? What are your recommendations? Forecasts. That's why I came here tonight for numbers. But hearing now that the department heads on other numbers turned in, that's not acceptable. These need to be done. We're running out of time. So I don't know what the deal is to get them in here. Some of these to be done. As far as us give the numbers so we can look at this budget, so we can get things figured out. Ms. Kennedy, you mentioned you requested certain departments to train in by Friday, not all, correct? Mm -hmm. Who did you request to train in by this Friday? I, yes. I gave them a, a schedule of um, I sent one email off to everybody. It had all of the department heads, you know, it was addressed all the department heads. It had the general fund and you, all the other funds. Okay, okay. And then as a schedule. I, I'm, I'm, getting a little, I'm getting a little frustrated. But there, there was a schedule. But, but that because you just. Okay. And I, I requested you submitted, a certain set. You seven. submitted, you asked certain departments to turn in by Friday. Who are those departments that turned in? Email right now, but I don't have them. Did they turn it into you on Friday? Some of them. And I don't know that I mean, you didn't have a Friday line, did you? Like, I'm not here. Yeah, I don't know if you didn't have that Friday line. Yeah, I don't think that was Friday. Yeah, I 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 understand where Commissioner Gann is coming from. I'm being very patient. Usually I'm not. But that uh, definitely needs to be addressed. That we need to get these figures in 
for us to be able to get the signature. Mr. Mayor, Commission, could we discuss timeframes uh, of, what, of what needs to be discussed at a next budget meeting? You did mention that when when Commissioner Gandhi mentioned about the meeting tonight, you did mention that you didn't agree about having this meeting tonight, correct? Or correct when, me if I'm wrong. When we were looking at the schedule, okay. we were going to have one budget workshop and it was going to be the weekend or the week before the commission meets. Okay. Could um, we could we discuss time frames and what specifically is going to be required on those specific dates? For example, my recommendation is to have department budgets presented at the next budget here. <coughs> which would be in two weeks, correct? Yeah. And that was that was my intention was to have members Go to go over all of this, and, and I do need some guidance on some things. But I mean, we've gotten off on this tangent, but I do need some guidance on some things so that I can fill in some some items in the worksheet that I'm going to have to fill in. Um, well, let me ask you this: <coughs> next budget meeting, these figures come in for you. You've got to go line the line the line the line the line. You have enough time? Yes, I do. I, I mean, because because I mean, that's putting you out there another two weeks. So that's why I'm asking if you have the time. If it's in the numbers in two weeks. Yes. And as I said, it's imperative that these numbers get in this. <laughs> Correct. You can do that because if you don't have ample time to go over it, that's going to affect decisions that you're making also. And that your decisions affect their decisions. Correct. And I think it goes back to Logan here, director. You know, you say Friday, it's Friday. Mm -hmm. Period. If not, it, it's Friday or whatever we need to do for them. And it's going back to Logan, mm -hmm. your employees on the out. You know, this is what we want to operate. You're not on board. You know, let me know. Let us know so we can make adjustments. Come in here, guys, and say Friday, I was supposed to have water, pets. Her, you know, and say, I only got this one, this one, this one, you know, stayed in her Bible, holding the chemical. Yeah, you know, my, my problem is in two weeks, when all of this is presented, in order for us the following week to accept it effectively, it would have to be finalized that budget workshop that night. So that we're all comfortable with it, that we're willing to accept it the following Monday. But as Commissioner Bolt was saying, if we need to adjust it, it's going to have to go back to him. We're not going to see the final lines and have a full understanding of how we got there for the adoption on the final meeting of the month, business meeting. Of and so there, I mean, there's realistically going to have to be changes made in that final week. Um, but for the most part, we'll have a good chunk of it reviewed and looked at. Uh, th this is giving you a good chunk to review anyways. Um, you know, taking it down from over 4,000 accounts that we were going to have to look at. You know, all of this stuff is, is, it, is an attempt to consolidate that and make it a simple, streamlined process. Um, you know, and I recognize it's fine. Um, you know, Michael's been telling me all along that we were behind on budget. We started in what mid April, we started our budget meeting, but that was immediately after Dr. Martinez came on. And there's there's other reasons that we got started on the budget plan. Um, and but there's that's why you have budget, that's why. This is a preliminary one for June first, but the final is July. So, I mean, we're crunch time right now. So, right. It's throughout, the year, throughout the year, we right. can we make the adjustments. adjustments. I just want to know what expenses is mainly just to make sure that our expenses, the mayor said, don't exceed the revenues. You've got to come up with a figure. I think it's basic math. It's just that it's like sometimes you just want to see the number. So either we, she said Monday night our agenda is like this big. Could we do sure. that meeting, shut it down, say at 6 15, 6 30, start another budget hearing for like an hour and go over some of the numbers that they've got? 
and, okay. and make it like a three times kind of deal. But I don't think we have to do that. Wait, she still has to advertise the Yeah, it's going to go out in the morning. I'll have time to advertise it. Okay, let's go back, if you don't mind, let's go back to city manager's request to discuss the timeline. And if there's no objections, in just a moment, I have a gentleman who would like to say something. It could be, be limited to it, whatever. But anyway, let's go over that. I haven't forgot yet. And just say, uh, go ahead. Because I think we need to get a timeline so that we can. Absolutely, Mr. Okay. Mayor. Now, we do have big departments with big budgets. And I think those are the departments we need to tap first. That's going to yes. be the major chunk of our budget. Right. So our major departments with major funding would be which departments? Uh, fire, police, um, and then the ones water. that have their own fund is wastewater, solid, and um, water. What's the other one? Water. Solid, water. Uh, water. So those are big departments. So we started those. And I mean, and keeping in mind too, you know, by, by when I got this, information to the department and so i did not give them much time to turn it back around to me because they knew what they were supposed to be working on this whole time they've had extra time waiting on me um so you know i i should have gotten numbers kind of thrown at me as soon as i got this out um it didn't happen that way everybody was waiting on me and i kept telling them not to be waiting on me um to keep working, to keep moving on it. Um, but I guess we start that mission and that's what we're going to And then stop it for like 30 minutes so we can grab a pocket and do another budget like hour or maybe about the same time as we get through. Okay, do you have a you. proposal? Mr. Mayor, Commission, my recommendation is next week at our commission meeting. If the police budget and the fire budget and public work budgets are ready to go, we should have that discussion. I don't have a problem. I'm going to ask. I didn't know if that was putting them too much under the gun. No. I think we need to start with the big ones and get them out there to begin with. Correct. But they're the biggest, so they're the most involved. Do we feel like we can have that for the next commission? One or two, yes. If you can give me a list of what they've submitted, if they've submitted their proposals for next fiscal year, their budgets, then we can discuss that next week. And then on um, then the following month, we week. will have to the finality of those and all of the others. Correct. And that will give me two weeks to go through every single budget. Again, using the example of the cemetery and saying, okay, we need a cut here. This is not necessary. We can use capital and so forth. So then we can bring to the commission total amount numbers compared to what's coming in. We'll have we'll have numbers by then. Yeah, I, I think we definitely, if we can, in addition Monday, uh, if we could have our annual live new projection okay i mean i, I realize we basically have to but it's not going to exceed it by much um, but that also needs to be minus all of the funds that are out of our control correct i mean maybe that uh, excuse me it's not out of our control that don't go that are not part of the general fund the item the funds that we cannot transfer interception the the, the the interception payments our, which will include all of our capitalization payments and all of that debt service all the yes, debt, debt. Yeah. so that we have a we have a projected annual revenue we have a debt service that we have you know is set in stone at this point we cannot adjust it so we know what that outlay would be we uh we will have uh, minus the, the funds that are dedicated funds. Get down to hopefully an annualized operating budget. And then we can start to see, okay, let's just say, I don't know what that fund will, $12 million what it is, but so, somewhere in there. Um, okay, if 
the water department were to be requesting six million and we pretty much know we're you know we've got a long way somebody's got to come to reality mm -hmm. either we've got to come to reality or they got to come so you know it would be nice and i and i agree that we for us to be able to start to understand it we've got to know it's kind of the magnitudes of each of these numbers correct uh, they don't have to be I'm going to say if they're a large number, even if they're possibly a hundred thousand off, some number that we can live with at least until we can get them adjusted down by the end of the month. Um, is that a reasonable? And, and again, you guys are doing the work. The reason I'm throwing this out to you is I'm not going to ask you to be here 24 hours a day, and that's not reasonable on our part. But to get there, we've got to be able to at least anticipate these timelines what i might do is ask shannon to help uh jump in on the payroll stuff um one of the things that we attempted to do at the beginning was we sent a spreadsheet out to all the department heads uh, that shannon developed that had each one of these items so payroll over time by the para and then she sent them their reports or you said the yeah. reports okay um and I've already noticed that when I've received the, the couple that I've gotten back, they're skipping over, the, over that. I knew I was going to have to go back, even if for the ones that did provide it, um, I was going to have to go back and verify that they pulled that appropriate information. And like I said, the, everything that deals with personnel literally makes up half of this. So that right off the bat takes a big chunk out of it. So if I could get some help on the payroll items, um, then that could free me up for, you know, the revenue items or the big, the big numbers for me to come up with that nobody else is going to be able to come up with. You know, I, I, I recognize that that's, you know, my section. Um, but yes, I mean, just this this spreadsheet's going to be. I've already got it built through self-calculating. This it's not hard to plug in. I mean, each department has 15 lines. It's not hard. It doesn't take long. As soon as I get those numbers, I can have them input into the master spreadsheet in five minutes. Um, you know, and then yes, I, I recognize that that's not the final number, but that's a number that at least bring in front of everybody to, to have that discussion um and you know so like i said we'll have to adjust it it's going to have to be a living breathing document through the year and like say we're just, at the quarter make some judgments see where we're in the next quarter and and so like when she tells you she needs seven hundred thousand for the animal shelter is that including her salary as well or is that yes. just okay yeah, yeah that was her whole section Okay. So, so what is that? So, and I, I mean, I've got, see, I have a different version of this on my computer because I had given this to Jaylene of Love last week um, with the intent of giving everybody plenty of time to review before this meeting. Um, but uh, my spreadsheet in my office now is, is more or less this clean sheet but with formulas built in and then the numbers plugged in that i have that i've been working so i've been working on my own numbers and then the department heads this is just the clean version from a week ago so it's changed a lot from this version that you're seeing now okay um dr martinez yes sir can you stay so that we'll, we'll under, have a good understanding of what we believe or what you believe we can have by next Monday night. So that we'll have an anticipation of, uh, you know, the guideline is what we're going to be looking at. Plus that, in order to get it on the agenda, we it'll. I would say if nothing else, it would give her. Uh, Something to put on the discussion item budget uh, works. I mean, not workshop budget uh, expectations, whatever the right wording is at this point, for 
these departments. And okay, I know realistic. Do you have the? Can you get the list of who turned in budgets on Friday? Yeah. Go to that. Go ahead. The schedule of who turned in? Mm -hmm. I don't know the schedule who was supposed to turn in. Who, send it to you. Who turned it in? Oh, she has. Well, who was supposed to turn it in was supposed to be Mr. Mayor. Commission, I, I've been working with FAR and well, all departments, but the, the departments that are pretty much ahead are the big ones fire, police, and public works are going to be our big departments. If we could tackle those departments, and I'm talking about our issues going to be the sewer plant. I know we have a, a fairly new manager there and he's struggling with the budget, but yeah. that, that will be a major issue there. That what we can handle that. Uh, uh, Bernardo's department, streets, parks and water department those 30 plus fire and police are the top five big departments and if you don't mind uh if we're going to kind of put those if you would ask the department heads to be here absolutely so that they can have a discussion of where their difficulties are coming on you know internally or yes. whatever and then maybe we can help make sure that they're getting the information while she's out if, if there's no uh, objection from the commission no i'm going to open for public comment for just a minute. Right. Here you go, Yes, sir. You'll have to <laughs> come up, introduce yourself. Three minutes. Some of my new line. Just a minute. So, obviously, we have a bit of a financial problem. It's a lot of discussed. So, just so they've got free advice. Don't have to take it. Be it as it is. So, obviously, the battle plan was to take her methodology to rebuild financially using her template. I know y'all are trying to hire new personnel to hit the boots on the ground, fill those gaps that we've had out there, personal shortages. But if your bet was on her plan for the long ball, you have to invest in it. Instead of hiring another grass cutter, an extra badge on there, sorely needed, yes. But if you're going to have her plan succeed, she needs the assistance. Just what I saw, she needs actual assistance to help take the data in, crunch it, because you're missing data. Everyone mentioned it. We got no numbers. Timeline's already here. You're fresh out of time. Okay? That's already been established. You have missed it. You have to work with what you got. Two weeks, turn it in. That's working out for you to redline all those budgets and turn them in, no big deal. But she has to fill a database, solo, all these data points. You're going to be starting right back with Because you got more bread and butter for her to fill. Mm -hmm. So, long wall, more assistance. Best directive, find them in your high hitting budget. Hitters. $1.5 million, it's a lot of money for one guy to sit there and track. It's a lot. Now I know what we have to do with my whole department. It's a lot of work. I spent two days a week doing it, even though I was supposed to be hired for another job. I know how data crunching can be. So to fill a database, you need someone crunching data. Once a week, once a month, constantly. Your plan will not work unless you invest it. You have to have someone crunching data at all of your high hitting spenders. So Reasons may be as much data as you can put into it. It's only as good as what you put into it. If you're trying to rely on putting her all that data into it, it's not going to work. She'll run out of time. Mm -hmm. Always run out of two things time and money. So if you're trying to solve a financial problem long term, you don't invest into more expenditures by hiring another badge, buying more trucks. I need to solve the real problem is that I don't have financial data to create the rest of the picture, which is the numbers. How do I project without numbers? If you're going to put her under the gun, make sure she has the tools she needs to succeed. She's going to need personnel backing her, counting the department's heads to say, hey, I've been working with so-and-so. The beloved treasurer has got my approval to be here, and I'm here to help you massage out because you got pure FNGs running your departments right now. They need mentorship, they need some know how. One person can't do it. 
and she can't sit there and do all the data crunching. You need someone in the background crunching numbers or even massaging out the HR policies and saying, hey, this is how you do it. This is how we want you to do it. This is the format that we already sent it. Have her with some actual backing, turn them into my crews in the back, I crunch the numbers, then I go work with our big doc. And he's gonna say, all right, cool, we have something to work with now. But one person can't do all of that. Like I said, you're gonna take a short-term loss, but you're gonna take a long-term win because she needs the data points in there to create such a future. That's just my opinion. Three minutes is, but it's all I got. Good luck. Thank you. I mean, I think Dr. Martini said, I think just go back to proper You know, because right now, you know, you're in it 90 days, she's in it 100 minus the weekends. It's not a lot of time yet to get in here. They just prioritize, and right now's budget, right now's quarterly reports. I think them are just really high, would be high on my list uh, from my experience here. And maybe just put everything else aside until we get this because. Commission needs good numbers to something to look at between now and what you want to submit it. That's a lot more comfortable with. So, that's all we need. Yeah, even on our regular meetings, if there's something you can push down through mm -hmm. June, July, do it. Get it out of the way to do this. So, what the farms? The ones in pink missed the deadline. So the ones in yellow turned it in the budget. The next deadline is in four days. But so you know, I told everybody I invite you to turn it in as soon as you have it. Uh, I just didn't want everything landing on my desk at one time and having to do the input all at one time, but that was a little bit too optimistic, I think. So, I mean, I no, we're I not, have a, I reserve the right to tell them their deadlines moved up, and I need these numbers. So, Mr. Mayor, Commission, I would recommend on our next uh, Commission meeting, which will be next Monday, we look at our two major budgets, which would probably be police and fire or public works. And then on um, the 16th, we'll have uh, I'll have a breakdown of every department budget. Maybe next next week. Maybe have a score priority list. You know that we know what you guys are working. On. Okay. Right. But I know that budget and court reports we need to be done. That's like super months. Right. I spent today working on the COVID report. So yeah, it's COVID. I'm scared. I'm still trying, this, trying to manage yeah. all these deadlines and handle everything, and it's coming at me all at one time. There's, it's just not possible, and I'm doing my best. But I appreciate that, Christine, uh, because I know I've been sending you emails off the COVID. Like, I sure don't want us to lose one point four million that's given to us come right. July because we need to submit something. So that is a, cool. another top priority in the project. On this list here, the majority of the deadlines are on May the 6th and May the 11th. Um, the ones that are highlighted that were due were the courts, correct? Municipal court corrections, community center museum. Okay, but pretty much our big departments are all due either on the 6th or the 11th. And the 7th. So that's. Uh, uh, yeah, it's Thursday and next Wednesday. That's approximately right. That is correct. Friday, Friday and the Monday. Friday and the following Wednesday. The, the strategy behind that was to give myself, you know, a couple days to do the input after the big departments had turned in their numbers so that I could have numbers completed for the next budget meeting. And we, I want you to know, we appreciate what you're doing. And it's not that we don't take from this that, you know, you're not doing enough or whatever. But it's just, you've got, as we were discussing, kind of like you were out, you've got to prioritize all of these deadlines and be working towards them. I know you 
we, we uh, needed a report to by the COVID fund before the 1st of May. Uh, ran into some obstacles. Don't know what that's going to do, but we missed one early on, as far as we know. This was 30, 60 days within uh, receiving the fund. We were supposed to submit a report, which would have been sometime uh, before October, possibly. No, September. Sometime in September it, uh, yeah. of 21. So we missed that one. We don't know what the repercussions of that are. Uh, we missed the other one as of April 30th. And I did I did forward the email that we had received that the Treasury Department was inundated with technical difficulties on their website of many different types. Um, and they just said that you wouldn't be held to the April 30th deadline if you had the documentation. So I printed both emails that I sent to them to technical support. I printed the reply, I printed the screenshot of my not having access to that report, it's date and time stamped. Um, so apparently that's what I needed to, you know, tell them this is why we missed the deadline. Maybe that's not entirely true, but. Well, they're being kind of lax on that. So. And maybe because we had such a personnel overturn on the first one and we didn't have the same people receiving emails, they will. Yeah. Well, and, and that's what I'm running into now is I've been gathering through documents because I have to find the original documents to upload and I'm not able to do that. So I wanted to throw that out there. If anybody knows where those might be, um, I've looked through all of the files as of now that I have in my office. Well, both mine and, and the previous manager office. Um, so I've not found those original documents. Um, I still need to go through all of the share drive documents. Uh, what I've done is I just pulled them all, just did a search in the share drive and pulled them all into one file so that I can just start clicking through those and seeing what they are. That's for the, for the original COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the first frame, I was able to get There was not much stock. Right. When it was at, it was just a typical just a full page doc and that's what's all they require for us to do. We didn't utilize the money when that was infrastructure and losses that was it. That's all we submitted. We submitted that's the only document we submitted and after that I believe uh, by the time jobs left us was right there right before October and mm -hmm. probably everybody missed that that something that happened right there. I guess I didn't require it to come on my email. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh I think they just want to know how we spent that one for but you know kind of at that point, in October, we had been spending three years for the title days in. Well, and, and that's an idea. Um, we don't have access to those emails from the, the mailboxes from previous. I get everything forwarded now. So, since I've been here, um, I get Anthony and Gary's emails forwarded to me, but that wouldn't be anything from previous. So, I wonder if. SWAT or somebody can give me access to those mailboxes and it may be in there. Somewhere. You should have it in his because he was here when, when I submitted and I signed that document. Mm -hmm. Maybe. So but, I mean, that's just the, that's another illustration of one of the obstacles that I face here is not having access to the documents I need, not, you know, I have, I have many, many things tying my hands. The least of which is time. For the commission's uh, knowledge, we had a meeting with uh, the uh, county financial director, and he was he was able to help us a little bit. He uh, he helped us identify that uh, the federal what, what is the site that's that done? It's the it's the U.S. Treasury side. The U.S. Treasury had. They had put on our site that we needed to submit ERA uh, reports. ERA is emergency rental assistance. Yes. Yeah. Whereas the county had received it's F L R F I don't know. Yeah, something like that, which is what we should have been 
having to report on also. So uh, they they had us mixed up as she stated. So yeah, you got I got that email too where they technically yeah. they wanted to be nice reporting it to you and Dr. Martinez. So I have I now have access to the appropriate reports. Um, and I went in there and just started and I got to the second page. The first page was just verifying, you know, name, address, tax ID, whatnot. Uh, second page, I can't go forward until I've uploaded the original documents where we accepted the funds and they approved funds or whatever. Um, there's three documents that I need to upload. Um, haven't come across those yet, spent the day looking for them. Um, be I don't know. Items too, not only the emails, but check the send items. Send it, you know, so yeah. Maybe look into the email and I'll find it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't received. find it in the received yeah, if, if I could have access to that mailbox. But um, the other good news that we we feel like is that we have up to four years to spend this particular funding, but we have to make sure we report so that we can keep in good standing. So uh, we have not missed any reporting deadlines are the only thing that we have exceeded at this point. Um, okay. Um, <clears throat> someone did. Is there, okay, mm -hmm. kind of back to you. In all of this, we kind of stopped you in a way. Is there anything else that you would like to present so that you kind of? Um, I place that I have some questions about certain things within these funds, but um, I think we'll just consolidate that into you know myself and the manager, possibly you, um, to kind of get some answers to some of these things. Um, you know, an example of which is debts, you know, how how the debts need to be sorted through. Um, I know that previously there was no accounting for, for example, the fire department or the fire truck coming out of anything from fire. Um, but there was I had a discussion with Chief Lazardo about debiting fire funds for the fire truck because it is equipment and that could have been reimbursed to the general fund. Um, he said that wasn't agreed, and I said, well, that was a different time, too. And I told him I was going to be debiting fire funds for the payments on the fire truck, which is $117,000 a year, um, at least in part. And I, I know that that would take away from, from other equipment and things that he could purchase in the meantime, but, you know, we still have this other truck to pay for and not a big pool in the general fund to be able to do so. So and there, there's some of that sort of thing that I just need some guidance on going forward. How are we going to handle this and handle that? And you know, and, and I guarantee there's things that I'm not going to capture. I, you know, this is all complete new to me. I don't know these accounts. I don't know these expenses. Um, it seems like every day I come to work, there's another expense that I didn't know about. Or, um, you know, we don't have near that problem on the revenue side, but we do have some. Uh, an example was Meritrio, or when Meritrio brought to me that um, we got revenues off of the, the saltwater disposal wells and, and whatnot. You know, some of these things, um, they come in you know, probably not real regularly. I also don't know, you know, until I'm able to get in there and analyze everything, I don't know if it's past due, you know, is there, are they real good about paying us? We don't ask, I don't know. Um, so that's all something that I'm going to have to look into. But I mean, we can put a number in there based on what we expect to receive over the year. <clears throat> is uh, uh, Mr. Fierro here this week? Yes, he'll be here in the morning. Okay. And we uh, are going to meet with him. Um, one of the things I want to ask him about has to do with, with uh, COVID 
expenditures. Um, and so, yes, he'll be here in the morning. And then at one tomorrow, we have a meeting with the DFA. Will he be at your DFA meeting? Um, I, no, I don't think he'll be in the DFA meeting, but I did want to have the meeting with him prior to the DFA right. meeting because he can enlighten me on a lot of the stuff that he's I just think I'm going to do a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's given to uh, request even after June is one of his assistants. I can give you a phone call away on June. He, he does work with state auditors on what needs to be. I mean, that's that's executive Were we able to uh, produce an engagement letter or a contract or anything for for their service? They thought that they had. Yeah. 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 The engagement letter. I don't. I'm not. Question that yeah. we we don't. We don't know is what we what we want them to do, uh, we're, and so until he gets here, he really can't tell us what he produced. Mm -hmm. We don't even know what he was supposed to Jamie produce. Oh. Yeah. Um, I do know. So what he did do. Um, this is after the conversation that we all had with the county, um, and I went to the ladies. Um, they basically confirmed what I thought to be true is Ed was working pretty far back into the early part of last year to reconcile the accounts because they had been reconciled, but not correctly. There have been large, large adjustments plugged in to make it reconcile because you have to reconcile before you can move on. So that's not reconciling. So he had to actually contact Tyler system and have those unreconciled because they were the only ones that are able to unlock them and he had to go back to do you all know um we've, we've gone back to june of 19. okay june of 19. Uh, june, i'm sorry june 20. of 21 i'm sorry 20 21 we're so he had to go back fix the reconciliation and then what he's done is he showed the girls how to do them, uh, which they had not been previously shown how to do it. And he uh, told them, he told Tracy that she was going to have a hard time with September. And that is still where she's at. I sat down with them several hours last week. Um, we found a couple things that, that Tracy hadn't found. I gave her a couple little tricks of what to look for. Um, we did some reverse stuff, um, but after that, we asked Ed to work on it, and he's still working on it. Yes, I talked to him today, as a matter of fact, and there was some stuff that Anthony put in that, or that Anthony did not put in. He said he reconciled up to September, and he did not. Okay. And they said he did. But so, he yeah, so that's part of what, um, and, but no, not necessarily that Ed is expected to do the reconciliation past their you know, past that point, but Tracy has done all the input for everything up until current. And so the reconciliation should go relatively quickly, but the part that we keep running into issues with, um, and I think I've mentioned this before, is that we have five different merchant service accounts, five different merchant service vendors. Um, they all have different cutoff times. They all have different cutoff dates. Where it's it makes our reconciliation extremely difficult, and um, that's one of the biggest challenges that they've had to try to work through in reconciling. Um, that's something I intend to remedy at some point when I can get to it to get on to one merchant service vendor so that our reconciliations aren't as difficult. Um, and said today that he's bringing two other employees to help him with the audit stuff. They're going to be working very fast paced getting stuff for the audit. And then he's going to help with the reconciliation with me and Melissa. He's going to sit down by September. He's looked at it. He's still looking over it because there's a mess. September's a mess. And so he's going to get with me in the morning. We're going to try to figure it out and get it done so we can move forward because we cannot move forward until September's done. But I think also is that everything that she's wanting 
requesting those three new York amendments and uh, then yes. submitting it to her. So everything that she's been requesting, I guess, we've got to clean it up before she gets it up. You know, Trace, he's not going to trace it straight to her. He goes to him, cleans it up, uh, just, you know, whatever he needs to do, and then submits it. So that's part of his duties, too, as, as the contracts just to help get a clean off so in the way we don't know what we have no uh basically the I think what we need to do is probably send uh, commission, uh, commissioners a copy of that at the end of his uh at the end of this week maybe have a report that would coincide with what has been finished or what is going to be completed where we stand on some other items. Mm -hmm. uh, that brought, to, while we were talking about that, we also, from next Monday night, in order to accept it by the May 15th deadline, we need to have a recommendation for a, an audit uh, firm. I sent you an email about that. Um, okay. Willoughby's office sent me a letter that we have to sign because we apparently approved a three-year contract with them, and this is our third year of a three-year contract. So as of this year, we don't have a decision. Our our auditor will be will be for this next year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so all we have to do is that letter, uh, forward it on to you and the manager to review it, and I guess we just need to sign it and send it back by May 15th. But at the end of now, if there was a question that she'd kind of gotten frustrated or whatever. So she's willing to finish out 2021. She's willing to engage on 2022. Apparently. Yeah. I, I, like I said, I have not spoken to her. Um, all correspondence has been going through Ed, but we were warned by everybody involved that come tax season, old CPAs, we're going to be putting our stuff aside and working on that. So that's been another huge delay in getting all of this done um, because it didn't get finished before tax season hit. Yes, we still work with the Now that he's done, she's, she, that's what she's, 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 Uh, any other deadlines that we have discussed that are out there that we need to be aware of? Um, I did get an approval for extension on the lodger tax audit. That was also due April 30th. And now I mean, every tomorrow, week is just a, I know, new, it's a new snowball yeah, on the table. Right. Tomorrow at one, yeah, the good. meeting with the DFA, uh, they need official approvals from the mayor and manager to have uh, Michael just go ahead and make the adjustments that he needs to make to get the second quarter done. Um, I had completely hit a wall. We tried going back and forth to try to complete it. That wasn't working. I asked him if he happened to be allowed to travel again, if he'd come sit down with me and we could fix those adjustments. Um, we did, we tried everything. Um, he would say, well, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Let's try this. Um, I ended up doing it over and over and over and over again and still couldn't get it to work. Um, so now he's just gonna just do what he's got to do that he knows to do after however many years he's been doing this. Get it done, plug it in so we can do third work. So we'll have to discuss that with them and um, the input for third work, um, which is, like I said, probably going to take another week and a half, like it did the first time. Um, but these DFA reports, after this budget goes through, uh, they will more closely mimic the the LGBMS account, so that will go quicker. But I also have the capability while I'm in there doing the maintenance of these accounts, is giving them the schema so that I can do an electronic filing of the GFA reports and I don't have to do it manually. So that's another 
another bird with the same stone that I'm going to be fixing with the budget projects. And you can adjust it too. You can be able to just finagle it all year. That's good. Yeah. Dr. Mayor, Dr. Mayor, do you have any other anything else you'd like to bring up at this time? That's it, Mr. Mayor, Commission. Okay. Just quickly, any commissioner, Commissioner Bowles, do you have anything? Thank you. Commissioner Fox. Okay. Jaylene, anything more? One good. Okay. I have nothing at this point. It's been uh, thank you for your time to present. Tell us where we're at and all of that. We've got as you know, as I hope everybody understands we're in a very uh, time crunch at this point. Uh, if you run into a uh, meeting, then I would suggest that Get, get it to our attention so that we can make a decision if we need to. And then uh, we can at least Monday night proceed with what we kind of targeted. I think that would be a great start. And then the following week may be a little bit easier and we can get out and make some good decisions from that so that in our final meeting, we feel confident and to the best of our ability at that point to uh, approve what we come up with when we proceed forward and start to continue to clean this up. I appreciate everybody's um, effort and attention. I appreciate our public for coming and your comments. And since we have nothing to do, thank you for adjourning.